All right, now we're ready to start uh, setting up the GPOs that will um, align with our requirements for this scenario. I'm logged in as Larry David, who's the Mac administrator. In a previous video, I delegated the Mac uh, GPO uh, for the corporate container to, to the Mac admins group so he can perform the management of this. So let's go ahead and verify that. I'm gonna expand the mains, Contoso. And in here you'll see that there's the Mac container and indeed underneath there's the Mac corporate settings. I'm gonna go right click and edit. The fact that this is enabled means that the delegation works correctly. And the first thing we're gonna do, now we have the group policy editor. So before we go on and edit some GPOs, I just wanted to highlight a few things. These are our original requirements. Uh, we have basic requirements, we have uh, security requirements, computer requirements, and user requirements. What I've done is I've, I have not highlighted the ones, the requirements that are inherent to being just a client in AD. So um, by just being a client in AD, um, you know, we don't have users in the local machine, everything exists in, a, in, in AD. Uh, but for example, in security, some things, for example, like the ability to eliminate a Mac admin accounts uh, are things that are set up at the computer level. I've actually highlighted this one as, as green. And the ones that are set up in the, at the user level, like the screen saver, uh, are set up with a yellow background. So we're gonna run through and um, you know do as many of these as possible. And uh, let's go ahead and do it. So we open the group policy editor. The first thing we may need to do is to add the templates if they do not exist. So in here, um, let's just maximize this, make sure that you have the best view possible. We're gonna right click the centrify settings. We're gonna add, remove templates, and we're going to add uh, both the Mac settings and the Centrify DC settings. We always have to do this, especially when we upgrade the console, because you get newer versions of the templates and new GPOs that you can leverage. Uh, at the same time, uh, you'll notice that we got our Mac OS settings here. So first, we're going to do all the computer-related settings here. So let's walk through this. So we have 802.1x. This is not part of our requirements right now. We may cover this ones in a future video. So accounts, uh, map zone groups to a local admin group. This is what allows to eliminate the practice of a local admin account. So we can basically have a group in AD and in here we have that Mac admins group that we created. And effectively what we've done is that any person that belongs to the Mac admins group will be an admin on the machines that are joining to that OU. This eliminates the need to have like a shared account that everybody knows, like an admin account. That's a bad security practice. Login window settings. Uh, in here, that's where we, you know, we're gonna enable the banner. For example, we can do, you know, uh, disclaimer. So here we have the banner. Um, uh, this is a private system. It's just a standard message. Uh, your company probably has a standard banner that they use across the board. Login window as we want to make sure that is name and password because this is a corporate environment. You don't want anybody to know the you know half of the equation with the list of usernames. And in here, um, we're gonna uh, uncheck password hints. We don't want to give any password hints out. And we're going to make sure that enable fast with user switching is disabled. Let's move to, um, you know, you see app store settings, custom settings, energy saver. This is for energy profiles, firewall. Uh, we realized that we had the firewall to be on all the time. So we want to make sure we enable that. Also, we said that we're going to disable iChat, disable iPhoto shedding. and disable iTunes music sharing. This is because in a corporate environment, you don't want people abusing the bandwidth of the network by sharing music. In the network settings, uh, we're gonna 
adjust on the DNS servers. We're going to provision DNS server IP addresses automatically. So I know that my 10.0.0.0 in this scenario uh, with the Microsoft environment, we know the, um, the IP for DC1 and we're going to add another one. I've actually added a, a stub zone in app one as well. I want to make sure that this is the order. If I wanted to change the domain suffixes, for example, I know that is corecontoso.com as a preference, but let's just say we have a local contoso.com as well. We want to make sure that corp contoso's are on the top. Remote management, this is where we allow certain people to access through uh, ARD. Scripts, if you have any login scripts. Security and privacy, this is where we're going to um, notice that we have a lot of options like how we validate certificates, enabling File Vault 2. I'm going to make an exclusive video for File Vault 2 here as well. And if I get a physical Mac, we'll do a little bit of uh, work with smart cards. But in the meantime, um, you know what? I'm going to secure a required password to unlock each system preference that's uh, desirable. And in services, I'm going to disable FTP. I don't want people to run their own FTP sites. I'm going to disable personal web sharing. But I'm going to enable remote login. This is for SSH. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that. And this takes care of the computer side of what we wanted to do. Notice that we also have the ability to designate an update server. That is, if you have a Mac OS X server, that is your current um, update server. That way you save some bandwidth when my Apple releases a patch. Yeah, kind of like the same as uh, WSUS. Before I move into the computer configuration, because I want to make my life easy and I, want, I don't want to deal with scoping of uh, GPOs, I'm going to make a small change. And this is that I'm going to enable loopback processing of GPOs. What that does, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you that. Let's find group policy. So when we enable loopback processing, what it does, it, it just makes all the user settings the same for every user. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can uh, enable loopback processing here. So let's maximize that. So it turns out that probably because of the way we've uh, delegated that, this is something that probably only the uh, uh, Windows administrator may, may be able to do. So let's take a look. If I'm, I am in the right place. So I may, may need to um, uh, oh, there you go. User group back, loop back processing mode. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that and replace this OK for now. So now that I've enabled loop back processing, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the user settings. So for, notice that we have 802.1x at the user level as well. So application access, access I'm going to limit a few things here. So in utilities, I don't want people running terminal. So I'm going to uh, disable terminal. And uh, I also, uh, in the applications list, let's see, maybe it's something that I'm not interested in seeing people seeing. Like, for example, iTunes. I don't want people running iTunes. This is a corporate environment. And um, let's see. Um, Next, I'm going to auto mount a few things. So notice that every user, and I'm going to show you for, for Larry David here, every user automatically, if I go to computer, has their, you know, their own share mounted. I'm going to go ahead and maybe create a file here. Just created an empty file. Or let me just 
put some content in this. Save it out. So every person gets their window share map. So I want I want the same experience on the max. So I'm gonna do auto mount network shares. Actually, this is the one here. Auto mount users Windows Home. Uh, I also have a, a file share that it's on app one. I want to mount that this one automatically as well. Although my user may not have permission to do so. So let's take a look. Doesn't have permission. I can save that later, but let's go ahead and auto mount that guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. The the key thing is to use the Unix nomenclature here. So it's SMB column four slash four slash not backslash app one and then files regardless of me having access or not desktop settings uh, this is the screensaver I'm gonna enable this I said that for 10 minutes I guess dock settings we were gonna play with that we're gonna adjust the position on the screen we're gonna make it on the left finder settings folder redirection let's see notice that we can import our MCX and plist files that's the old way of doing things but uh, media access so we said that access to um, internal disks uh, is going to be a oh, password only so actually you know what um, CDs and DVDs so we're gonna require authentication for that pretending that this is a lab mobility settings we'll, we'll do some mobile stuff but later um, Printing settings. I could actually specify a printer list. This is actually a feature that I'm using for the first time here. But I'm going to go ahead and add that. And um, I guess we need a URI. Let me just take a look in here. Okay. All right. So it sounds like uh, it would be. Um, a Windows printer would be this format, CDCSMB. So let's go ahead and copy it. I do have a generic printer that I set up um, on my app server. So it would be um, let's go ahead and paste that and we're gonna make it app one generic. So, um, and this is, uh, so notice that we don't provision the actual driver. It has to be in the machine. Otherwise, it'll pick the, uh, the PostScript driver. And uh, if you wanted to take a look at that, I can just uh, open app one and you'll see that the generic printer is in there. It's just a, uh, uh, print server for just uh, printing text files. Security uh, scripts, if you want to specify your logon scripts. Uh, the cool thing is that you have the ability to run those scripts as root. Uh, therefore, you can make it really powerful. You could even deploy software with that. Security and privacy. Uh, one thing that we want is always to require authentication when somebody comes out of the screensaver. This is to emulate the control out delete situation there. And then system preferences. I believe that because my machine is a Mavericks, I'm gonna use uh, 10.9. So I'm gonna, you know, uh, some of the built-in stuff I'm gonna disable, I think it's iCloud, because we don't want people to synchronize personal, you know, uh, corporate files into their own iCloud. So we wanna disable that. And uh, I'm done with the GPO settings. So the next step is to test them out.